I'm going to speak to you today about how we can uh, think about climate variability and climate change and how this might influence um, spatial patterns and dengue fever and how we might be able to link um, integrate climate information into decision, decision support systems for dengue. So here we can see a graphic um, showing the change in uh, global uh, temperatures from um, 1850 through to um, 2018. And each stripe here, this, um, these graphics are referred to as the warming stripes. And, and each stripe shows us the average uh, global temperature um, spanning um, well over a century. And we can see this very marked, uh, dramatic sort of warming trend over the last 30 years. And at the same time, um, the global distribution of de dengue has expanded uh, dramatically. So in the 1970s, around uh, nine countries reported severe outbreaks of dengue. And uh, now um, over 120 countries are reporting this. And this is mainly due to uh, the, the distribution of the Aedes mosquitoes that transmit the disease and the way they've been able to um, expand their range to uh, many different uh, geographies. So we know that the expansion of um, arboviruses like dengue isn't just uh, due to the climate or environmental conditions, it's also due to the way that people live. Um, here we can see one of the most densely populated uh, favelas in Rio de Janeiro. And we can see how people are living in very um, close proximity to each other and having to rely on temporary water storage containers to, to access water. You can see all the sort of blue containers there. And they can uh, serve as very uh, effective mosquito breeding habitats. So this combination of sort of warming environment, uh, population density and uh, poor environmental hygiene standards kind of creates the perfect situation for big explosive dengue outbreaks. Uh, we also know that the global spread is due to the increased uh, movement of people from one side of the globe to the other, as well as um, trade in used tires, which allows uh, invasive mosquito species to enter into previously ineffective areas. And while um, uh, climate change is causing gl global warming and more erratic uh, rainfall patterns, we're also seeing an extreme, uh, more extreme and frequent events such as hurricanes, droughts and floods. And that's the thing that I'm very interested in, seeing how we can use predictions of these extreme climatic events to understand how this might impact the timing and intensity of infectious disease outbreaks. And we want to think about how we can make use of the wealth of environmental data that's available to us and transform this into meaningful uh, information on the ground and to be able to in, uh, be able to intervene at the local level and try and understand when we might uh, be at higher risk of dengue outbreaks. We want to try and shift from a situation where we're relying on um, surveillance data only, um, or we're sort of overwhelmed by an epidemic, which, which is really what's happening in the current situation. Uh, and we want to be able to shift from this surveillance framework to a prediction framework by incorporating uh, climate information, um, which can give us some predictive lead time based on the sort of natural lags in the system that you get between an anomalous climate event and how that might affect mosquito populations and feed through into increased reported cases in the hospital. And we want to increase that lead time even further by using forecasts of the climate, while at the same time being able to understand and communicate the additional uncertainty, the uncertainty that we introduce into our models by using uh, forecasts uh, climate. So the idea is to try and link any sort of early warnings that we can make of increased risk to early action so we know when and where we can intervene or perhaps uh, if, when we are in a situation where we have limited resources we can direct those resources to the places at greater risk. Uh, this is an example um, a schematic of an early warning um, system that we put together for Brazil um, and this system is set up so that three months in advance um, you can incorporate uh, forecast climate information of the next three months 
Um, with the uh, case surveillance data you have at the time that you want to predict to give you some indication of um, increased incidence, um, we combine this information together to make a probabilistic prediction um, three months in advance. This is an example that we did um, for Brazil, combining uh, seasonal climate forecasts, uh, data from the Ministry of Health, uh, to make an advance warning for dengue. And then after the event, we were able to compare um, this was, uh, we, we put the forecast together for the uh, 2014 World Cup uh, when more than 3 million uh, travellers uh, came to Brazil and uh, were distributed among the sort of 12 different cities that were hosting the Games. And after the event, we were able to compare the observed cases to our uh, realistic forecasts and see the areas where our model did a good job at predicting a high risk um, of dengue. And we found that on average, the, our model did a better job than just using seasonal averages alone. And since uh, the time of uh, that forecast, our work has been progressing and we're seeing that uh, dengue is expanding beyond its sort of traditional boundaries. Uh, so there was these sort of natural barriers to diffusion um, in the south and in remote areas of the Amazon because the climate conditions were less suitable or because there were very sort of uh, limited transport links. But gradually, as the temperature is getting warmer, as Brazil is becoming uh, more connected and linked, uh, we're seeing they expand into other areas. And uh, Sophie Lee is conducting her PhD research uh, looking at trying to understand these uh, the, the expansion of dengue and thinking about how the role of uh, human mobi mobility and connectivity, how this might uh, combine with environmental suitability to allow this expansion. And we're also in our group thinking about how uh, climate conditions interacts with the sort of underlying um, land use types and how this might uh, behave differently, for example, if we're in the Amazon rainforest compared to in the very dry um, northeast uh, region and trying to think about how, what that might mean in terms of early warnings. So one of our active research areas at the moment is trying to understand um, if droughts might be exacerbated uh, dengue risk in Brazil. So some of our previous research has, uh, we found a, a link between um, drought conditions followed by warm and wet conditions causing uh, the optimum uh, conditions for dengue outbreaks in Barbados. So we've been now looking, taking this example from one uh, small island developing state, expanding this approach for the whole of Brazil, which has a very sort of varied geography and different uh, socioeconomic conditions. And um, we want to understand if the sort of increased uh, frequency of drought that we're seeing, particularly in the northern regions, if this is having an impact on uh, dengue epidemiology in Brazil. Um, here we can see a map showing uh, levels of urbanization uh, across Brazil. So we can see uh, there's much more uh, people living in urban areas in the, in the southeast, for example, compared to parts of the northeast and, and the Amazon rainforest. And uh, we're exploring how this might be related to things like water storage practices. So we can see that generally more sort of at the micro region level, we have like five 158 microregions across Brazil, at this level we can see that um, access to the water network is uh, a lot higher in more urbanised areas and a lot lower in these uh, sort of rural areas, particularly in the north. And we want to understand how uh, these hydro hydrometeorological extremes such as droughts and floods might interact with this underlying uh, socioeconomic conditions. So we've been applying a um, a modelling framework where we're combining distributed lag non-linear models with our sort of Bayesian probabilistic prediction framework um, and exploring how uh, extremely wet conditions and extreme drought conditions might impact uh, dengue relative risks and what kind of uh, time frames are involved. And we found that in urban areas, it's um, very short lead times uh, extremely wet conditions exacerbate the risk of dengue, whereas rural areas, areas that have less access to um, um, piped water network, we're seeing that at uh, longer lags, uh, drought conditions are exacerbating this risk of dengue. And this is uh, 
very interesting that we're finding similar patterns that we found in Barbados and very interesting to see this differential pattern between urban and rural areas and that might imply that different um, intervention uh, strategies need to be designed depending on, on where you are and need, we have to think about how we can uh, direct these interventions at the sort of at the local community level and to raise awareness about intervening during not only the wet and warm season but also during uh, dry conditions to make sure that uh, improvised water storage containers unintentionally become additional um, larval habitat. And we're also been working with um, Lais Fretas at uh, in Fia Cruz to think uh, more at the sort of intra-urban level uh, so not only dealing with big regions but also thinking about how um, the risk of arboviruses so not only dengue but how this now interacts with chikungunya and zika that are also um, circulating uh, within Brazil and thinking about within the city how different sort of socioeconomic patterns and uh, levels of sort of living conditions might impact the risk. And with now we're sort of exploring how these sort of nonlinear and delayed impacts of climate impact the risk. We want to think about if we can use this information to predict the risk in advance and thinking about when and where these uh, uh, early warning systems might be more useful. And here we're, we can see the uh, relationship between the El Nino Southern Oscillation and uh, on the left we can see the um, Palmer Drought Severity Index. So we can see El Nino events are strongly related to drought events in the Amazon in the north of Brazil. Um, and at the same time, they're extra, uh, strongly linked to flooding events in the south of Brazil. So thinking about how we can use these sort of precursory climate um, phenomena to help us predict in advance and what kind of different dengue patterns we might see depending on where we are. And the idea is to uh, up to we're able now to six months in advance start trying to predict the risk of dengue using um, open source uh, seasonal climate forecast information and we can sort of as we're approaching our target we can start to replace our seasonal climate forecast information with observations of the climate to try and in improve our forecasts um, each month as we sort of approach the month of interest and also to extend the lead time forward each month. And we've been working, um, thanks to a UK space agency funded project, we've been working to develop an operational dengue early warning system at Vietnam. Um, we've been engaging with uh, our partners in Vietnam, particularly at, <clears throat> at the Ministry of Health um, and the WHO, to make sure we design a system which aligns with their um, decision making processes and using the, the dengue information that they send us every month. Um, so uh, Felipe Colón González has been uh, leading some dengue modelling work and we've been looking to uh, design a sort of super ensemble of dengue models using uh, different aspects of climate information and to forecast this in, in advance. Um, this here is showing uh, how well our model uh, can detect outbreaks. So here we can see uh, stronger shades of red uh, showing that the model suggested there was a high probability of uh, dengue outbreaks. Uh, this is for all the different provinces in Vietnam uh, from north to south. And where we see a, a black cross that shows that the uh, level of dengue exceeded um, an outbreak threshold. In this case, it's the 95th percentile of the historic distribution. And we can see that our model is doing a relatively good job at um, detecting these outbreaks in advance. So we're working to incorporate this information into decision makers. And uh, we've also been developing um, this application for other places. This is an example for uh, Paraguay, which uh, Paraguay has experienced one of its worst dengue outbreaks uh, ever at uh, the beginning of, of this year. And all their information is made um, available on the website. So we have been uh, using this information and combining it with seasonal climate forecast information from the capacity um, climate change service data store uh, to produce uh, monthly probabilistic forecasts and also to evaluate how well these forecasts would have done in, in the past. So that's some work in progress. 
Um, and thank you very much for your attention. I hope you could hear me and I'd be happy to take any questions.